preparing for the PAT exam, one thing which I found really useful to have was just a space to discuss questions with friends who are also um, taking the exam. So in my specific school, there were four students taking the PAT exam. And what we would have was that each week, Tuesday lunchtime, we just have a time to talk through past questions, discuss our ideas, and at least try to come to some element of a, of a conclusion. My school perhaps didn't have the best teachers who had all of the answers, but what they could provide us was just a space to discuss them. And I feel like that, I found that to be really helpful, the fact that week upon week, um, becoming more comfortable about talking about complex ideas. And I feel like the more practice you can do this, the better it not only prepares you for the PAT exam, but also for interviews. Because I believe in interviews, what, um, that what your interviewers want to see is the fact that you can take the knowledge which you've gained at A-level and apply it to foreign situations. Or to be able to receive hints and receive um, prompts that you may, um, from an interviewer, and then to now apply this to your own knowledge and use this to form like a, a complete answer. So I'd say definitely checking out past papers, check, definitely from early on as well. So if you can start during the summer holidays, I'm sure you want to relax a bit. I'm sure we all do, but do try and perhaps organize or set aside a couple hours here or there during the week to just keep your mind ticking over because you may start early on in, in the summer holidays, but by the time it's August ending, all the things which you're, all the tricks and techniques you're developing, you may have forgotten. And I think the key thing to the PAT exam is that the is trying becoming comfortable with spotting the tricks, especially um, I know in, in previous papers there used to be multiple choice questions, but even in the three four mark questions, there are almost always a trick to make the question a lot simpler to do. And in terms of how do I find these tricks, I guess the best way of answering that question is to say going back through past papers and seeing the patterns, because almost it's almost guaranteed that you'll have. Um, questions related to probability or questions related to maybe a graph sketching. So to see that this is a pattern year upon year, it's best to make use of trying to find the tricks which are associated to those questions. May not, it's worth knowing now that you may not finish the exam, but that is okay. There's nothing, I know I'm sure in your exams in school you're used to perhaps doing really well or getting like high marks or perhaps finishing exams with loads of time to spare. But it may be a thing in the PAT exam which you don't finish, but that is okay and there's nothing wrong for you it's not for you to now start feeling down about yourself because I feel like just mentally as human nature we like to forget, think about the things which um, we like to think about the negative things so much more than we think about the positive things that we were able to do so our mind is fixated on the things which we struggled with and it almost forgets the fact that we'd answered maybe six seven eight pages of questions perhaps even maybe even correctly so yes of course you may walk out the exam and feel like you could have done things differently but do bear in mind that if you have adequately prepared you're more than likely to have got questions right along the way. So try to find a balance to your thought process. And yeah, I mean, once you've done it, you've done it. So I'll definitely say prepare as much as you can. But once you've got it out of the way, you'll still have other universities, which I believe you would have applied to.